Good morning, ladies. Welcome to this 85th episode of Mindset Monday. You know, originally I got up this morning and I was planning to do an episode entitled, Do You Have Self-Pity? I guess I'll have to wait till next Monday to do that. But I switched it because I, I was just felt convicted. I wanted to talk about this today. And I woke up this morning with a real anxious heart, a real heavy heart. And I, I, obviously, I don't know why I wake up almost every morning with anxiousness and worry that wants to be there, but it happened, right? So I want to share with you the reasons why I can get out of that state of anxiousness and worry pretty quickly now. I never used to. And I've shared this with you before during our coaching calls and maybe even in a few Mindset Mondays, but I, I just need to reiterate this because five years ago, I made a decision that I was no longer going to worry. I learned how to worry from my mother. I grew up in a very worried environment and the household of my childhood was full of fear and worry because my mom was that way. I learned it from her. So I grew up as a child being a worry wart. I even as a child had symptoms of worry. I would have constant stomach aches uh, as I got into high school. And even in college, there was a couple incidences I can remember where I was having heart pains and I thought I was having a heart attack. And I remember one specific night I was at home and I was having chest pain and my mom rushed me to emergency. And the doctor's like, you know what? you have nothing wrong with you. It's anxiety. And that was my first episode of being rushed to the hospital was in high school. I remember that. And I remember even younger than that, I went to the doctor because I was having tons of pains in my stomach. And my mom took me to the doctor. And, you know, she, I was thinking I might have had like some worms or some parasites or anything like that, right? Because I was so like, always worried. And then in my adult life, after even college, you know, as an adult, I ended up getting adrenal fatigue. And then that, and just most recently, you know, six years ago, I had cancer. And I am 100% convinced that the worry that I've learned throughout my life has caused all of my ailments of my, of, in my health. So I decided five years ago, after I went through that bout of cancer, that bout of cancer for me was my work. I worked that entire time to really get a grasp on my worry. And I made a decision that I was no longer going to worry. I was no longer going to let it fester because if it can cause me to develop cancer, it will be the next thing for me is death. <laughs> and I'm like, I am not going to worry. And I always like, was like, why is it that worry has such a stronghold on me? And I truly believe that it's the enemy. I think that the enemy knows exactly where our weaknesses are. And for me, worry never felt good. I felt miserable all the time. I treated people poorly because of my worry. It would cause me to snip at people, to be short with people. It caused me extreme depression at times. It caused me anger. It presented as me being snippy to others. And so I didn't even realize that until I really started to study worry. And, and when I made that decision five years ago, I decided it was no longer going to define me because I had also told myself, oh, I'm just a worry ward. I'm just, that's just who I am. That's just how I was raised. That I, I was like, it would define me. And I said, you know what? No, I am no longer going to be defined as a worry wart. I am a woman who used to have worry. I am a woman that no longer worries. I am a woman that has worry, but I now know what to do with it. And I truly believe that worry is a habit. I think that we try to tell ourselves that we are worry warts or that we're just, that's just how we were made. Or, and I just don't think we need to define ourselves that way. I think it can be unlearned just as, as much as we've learned it. I think it can be undone like a habit is undone if we pay attention to it and if we work on it. It's just like being a smoker or just like being a binge eater. If you always tell yourself, well, I'm just a binge eater. That's just what I do. Then that's what you're going to be. If you tell yourself, well, I just smoke. I can't, I can't decide not to smoke. Then you will be a smoker. So just like when somebody says, I am not going to smoke anymore, and they make a decision not to smoke, it doesn't mean that the desire to want to smoke 
is going to go away. Your that desire is still going to be there, but you've made a decision not to smoke and you co- quit cold turkey and you just don't smoke anymore. That is what I did with worry. I made a decision I am not going to worry and I am doing did and I'm still doing whatever I can to not let that creep in. It doesn't mean that worry's gone away. It doesn't mean that there's not going to be circumstances in my life, events, people that might trigger that worry to generate in me. That happens on the daily. Point in case, this morning I woke up again with this anxiousness and this worry. The, 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 the good news is that even though now it pretends to be there, I no longer carry it with me like a heavy purse every single day. I know it's there. I'm able to apply what I've decided and, and the steps that I'm taking, I'd be able to make worry not a thing anymore. It, when it comes, I now know what I need to do to allow it to be there without it impacting me. Worry is always going to be an underlying issue and it's not, I, I shouldn't even say really an issue. It's just always going to present itself because again, I've had 30, 40 years of that being embedded in me. The difference now versus five years ago when I just made a decision, I'm not going to worry is that I now have the tools and I brought awareness to it. And when it happens, I can now take the steps I need to be able to not allow it to fester inside of me. That's a huge difference. So I want to share with you today kind of seven reasons why I do not worry anymore. And just to reiterate, in order to get to these reasons, I had to make an intentional decision. And the only way I was able to make an intentional decision for me was because of my faith. If I did not believe in the Bible, if I did not believe that there is a savior, if I did not believe that, you know, the Bible is my manual, you know, then I don't think it would have been easy for me to make, nor do I think I would have kept honoring that decision. You guys know what I teach in the academy, right? It's like when you make a decision, you make the decision and you honor it no matter what. And for me to make the decision not to worry, I honored that, but I had to do the steps on a daily basis. And I still do, not every single day, but it does creep up very regularly. But now, because I've practiced, because I've honored my decision, because I now have the tools that I need to not worry, it has gotten easier to not worry for long periods of time. It used to be like, I would worry and it would last for days. Then when I made the decision five years ago, I'm not going to worry, it would come, the anxiousness would be there, and it would, instead of lasting five days, it maybe lasted three. Then maybe a, a year later, it got down to one day. You know, then maybe it got down to a few hours. Now, when I worry, I literally obliterate it within minutes. Like I am not going to allow worry to infiltrate and fester inside of me anymore. I'm just not going to do it. And I'm going to tell you something. Since I've made that decision and I've worked on the steps I needed to to, uh, get to this point, my life is so much more peaceful. My health is so much better. I feel so much more in control. I feel that worry was killing me. It was miserable. And I didn't like how I treated people when I worried. So that is why I decided today to do this Mindset Monday on worry, because I know so many of you are dealing with this right now. And if there's anything I can teach you, or if there's anything I can share with you is seven reasons why you shouldn't worry. The first step though, is to make sure that you make a decision that you're not going to worry. And then you can use these steps I'm going to teach you today to just reinforce that decision. Before I get into the seven reasons I want to share with you, last night, I went to a concert here in Fort Myers, and it was a concert that was at a church here near me. And (laughs) I, I honestly didn't feel like going. I was just at home in my pajamas most of the day yesterday. I decided to take the day off from all social media, from just work and just, I needed to rest. And, you know, I really initially didn't want to go to this concert only because I wanted to stay in my jammies and, and be lazy. Right. But I said, I'm going to go because what, first of all, I told my family and my relatives that got the tickets. I was going to go. I'm not going to back out. 
And the other reason was I really wanted to feel uplifted. I was just in a position where I just knew that if I stayed home, I wouldn't get the value. I wouldn't be able to, you know, hear this family. This called the Collingsworth family, right? And I've heard them online before, never heard them in concert, but they're amazing. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to go. And you guys, I'm going to tell you something. I was so blessed. I was so blessed by this concert last night that I'm, I'm going to actually share at the end of this Mindset Monday, I'm going to share um, a video with you of them so you can, I can introduce you to them, but they are, they were such a blessing. And I, I think the other reason why I wanted to do this Mindset Monday for you today was because I was so blessed last night and I felt so empowered and I felt so at peace and so in love with my faith and so in love with my life. And then I wake up and I'm like, why am I anxious? And why am I worried? And it just goes to show you that the enemy and our, not, not just the enemy, but our brains, our brains naturally want to go to thoughts that are dangerous. They want to go to thoughts that cause us worry because our bodies want to keep us safe. If we don't practice allowing our brains to give it other thoughts other than negative thoughts and worry thoughts and pessimistic thoughts. If we don't intentionally correct that, we will never be able to manage our brains because our prefrontal cortex, our brains, right? You guys know what I teach. I teach the primal brain, which is the child, the toddler brain. And I teach you about the prefrontal cortex part of the brain. The prefrontal cortex part of the brain is the, the manager. It's the one that makes decisions from a place of, of, of power. The, the prefrontal makes de decisions from a place of power. The primal brain or the toddler brain makes decisions based on emotions and based on feelings and based on primal. It's not the manager. It's very primal. It's very immature. And we have both parts of the brain. And if we don't start utilizing the prefrontal to make some of these decisions, we, that's how, why we stay stuck. So the prefrontal will start bringing awareness to the situation in any circumstance that you're dealing with. So my point is, is that this morning after just, you know, going through this amazing concert and being really blessed and, and just feeling super uplifted, once again, I wake up. There you go. My brain wants to go to worry and anxiousness. So I got up this morning and feeling very heavy. And I know exactly what I was feeling heavy about. I had a dream in the night, which is odd. I don't even re or hardly ever remember my dreams, but I had a dream that was very worrisome and, and kind of got me in a tizzy. And I woke up and I started right away thinking about all the negative things in life. And I've started to worry about the world, about finances, about, you know, my husband specifically. And so I'm like, okay, enough. So I get up this morning, I go to my Joyce Meyer devotional, which I use every single day. And of course, today, on this date, the title of the devotion was letting go of worry. Now, again, I've done this devotion, I've, I've kept this book, the name of the book is called My Time with God Renewed in His Presence Daily by Joyce Meyer. And I've gone through this, I think for two or three years. So it's so amazing because even though I've done this lesson before last year on March 7th, it always comes at the opportune time. So I, I woke up, right. And I'm full of anxiousness and worry. And then of course the devotion today was, you know, first Peter five, seven, which is, is casting the whole of your care means all of your anxieties, all of your worries, all of your concerns once and for all on him for he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. So casting all your cares on him for he cares for you. So then I go into, of course, a deeper study on that verse. And that led me to another part of scripture, which were the seven reasons why we should not worry. And this is based on Matthew 6, 25 through 34. And these are the seven reasons why we should not worry. And so this is what led my study today. And I want to share these with you because listen, I just be just like how you guys will read uh, the directions to putting something together. And then that and then what happens when you read the directions to put something together? What's the result? You're able to put something together. Let's say you read the directions on how to put an Ikea table together, right? You take out the directions, you follow the directions, you do it, 
and you get the table together. You guys are in here in the academy. You follow my nine step wise one process. You do the work. What's the result? You get the result. The Bible for me is my manual. It is the directions of most everything in my life that I need help with. So when I'm worried, when I'm anxious, when I'm depressed, when I feel down, when I are having issues with finances, whatever it is, I can go to my Bible and I can figure out what steps I need to take to help me with my problem. So I'm going to share with you guys today the seven reasons not to worry. And this comes directly from scripture and it's Matthew 625. Matthew 625 says the number one reason, this is number one, why you should not worry is the same God who created life in you can be trusted with the details of your life. Because of the ill effects of worry, Jesus tells us not to worry about those needs and that God promises to supply. Worry may, one, damage your health, two, cause the object of your worry to consume your thoughts, three, disrupt your productivity, four, negatively affect the way you treat others, five, reduce your ability to trust in God. How many ill effects of worry are you experiencing? Right? How many ill effects of worry are you experiencing? Like me, were you getting... Are you getting chest pain? Or are you getting uh, pains in your stomach? Are you developing disease? Is your blood sugars high? Are you constantly snipping at people? Are you constantly not showing up in the world as yourself? Are you constantly feeling angst? And, and how is that impacting you, right? So the difference between worry and general concern is worry immobilizes you, but concern moves you into action. So the number one reason their number one out of seven is because the ill effects of worry will cause you so much harm internally. And so the same God that created you in life can be trusted with the details of your life. So trust him, number one. Number two, worrying about your future hampers your efforts for today. How true is that? When you worry about something, how many of you, when you worry, do you, it consumes you for the day and you get nothing else done. Worry causes you procrastinate. It causes you not to, to shut down. It causes you to hide. So how many times have you done that? I know I have. So that's the other reason why, why you should not worry because it, it causes you to not get important things done in your life that you need to get done. Number three, Matthew 6, 27, worrying is more harmful than helpful. Again, why? Because worry changes your physiology. Worry will cause you to become anxious, which raises your cortisol, which then raises your blood sugar, which then raises your insulin. Insulin is very inflammatory, right? So again, worrying is more harmful than it is helpful on a physiological level, but also on an emotional level. You know this to be true. When you worry, think of what it does emotionally to you. Uh, number four, uh, Matthew 6, 28 through 30. Another reason why you should not, not worry is God does not ignore those who depend on him. This is a promise from God that if you cast your cares upon him, he will care for you. First Peter 5, 7 says that. And also so does Matthew 6, 28 through 30. Matthew, Matthew 6, 28 through 30. 30 says, and why do you worry about your clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Verse 29, did I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these? If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here to, and today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you or you of little faith? So do not worry saying, what shall you eat or drink? Or what shall you wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows what you need. But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So he promises you that he will take care of you. He instructs us not to worry. Number five, worry shows lack of faith and understanding of God. Again, when you worry, it shows you have a lack of faith in an understanding of God. So true, right? I mean, you either are going to have faith or you're going to have fear. You are either going to have worry or you can worship. 
you are either going to have anger or you can have understanding. You can either have hate or you can have love. Again, the first ones, worry, worship, anger, hate, all those are, I think, feel feelings from the enemy. And when we can choose to consciously have worship instead of worry, faith instead of fear, understanding instead of anger, and love instead of hate, those have to be practiced. And through scripture, and the Lord promises us that if we understand our faith, understand the Bible, we don't need to worry. So that was one of the big things that was kind of an eye-opening and an aha moment for me was when I made a decision five years ago. All these years, I had never decided not to worry. And the other thing is when I made that decision, every time I would start to worry, I thought, listen, when I am worried, that is showing me that I don't have very good faith. And I want to have faith. I want to put my faith in something other than myself. And so that's another thought that I would use in my T line, right? For using the model when it comes to doing this, I would put that T line, that scripture in my T line. And that would always help me too. So number six comes from Matthew 633. There are real challenges God wants us to pursue and worrying keeps us from them. So to seek his kingdom and his righteousness means to turn to God first for help, to fill your thoughts with his desires, to take his character for your pattern, and to serve and obey him in everything. What is really important to you? People, objects, goals, and other desires all compete for priority. Any of these can quickly bump God out of first place if you don't actively choose to give him first place in every every area of your life and think about that when we worry we are trusting ourselves to figure out a solution and we're putting our faith in other things or other people or ourselves when we put our faith in him we are allowing him to take on that worry and i'm telling you something that is a huge relief when you can trust God for your situation or your circumstance that you're worried about. It takes it off of our shoulders. Doesn't mean that we have we aren't diligent and we aren't putting effort into creating something else in our life, but we always ask Him for His guidance first. That first and foremost has helped me in every area of my life especially when I'm worried about something. I'm like, listen, I'm like, Lord, I'm worried about this. I'm putting it in your hands. Give me wisdom. Give me guidance on how to handle this particular situation or, you know, whatever it is. And that serves me so much better. And it works better because then I'm not letting worry affect my action. I can take action from a different place. I can take action from an, an attitude of faith versus an attitude of anger, resentment, worry, whatever, right? I can tell you one thing, my action will be a lot more productive if I'm taking it from a place of faith versus from a place of worry. And then the last one, number seven, comes from Matthew 634. Living one day at a time keeps us from being consumed with worry. Planning for tomorrow is time well spent. Worrying about tomorrow is time wasted. Sometimes it's difficult to tell the difference. Careful planning is thinking ahead about goals, steps, and schedules, and trusting in God's guidance. Well done planning can help alleviate worry. Worriers, by contrast, are constantly consumed by fear and find it difficult to trust God. They let their plans interfere with their relationship with God. Don't let worries about tomorrow affect your relationship with God today amazing, amazing. When you can put your trust in these seven reasons not to worry, I promise you, your worry will start to subside. Now, here's, hear me out. If you're just going to start to apply some of these principles, like making the decision and then digging in and, and using th- these, these scriptures to help you, don't expect it to happen overnight. You have to pray for help. 
You've got to pray for wisdom. You've got to pray that God will help you. And you've got to dig into these scriptures every single day. I, what I did is I would put these scriptures in my T line and I would put them in my T line. I would repeat that scripture throughout the day. And that would just help me to always not depend on myself for answers, but depend on scripture and my faith and God for help. So I really hope this was helpful for you. I promise you guys, I'm going to be praying for each of you who are listening to this. And if you are having any issues with severe anxiousness and worry, I am going to pray for you. And I want to end this Mindset Monday as promised with a video of the Collingsworth family that I went to listen to last night. And it's, it's seven minutes, so just watch it, enjoy, and um, I hope it blesses you. Have an amazing rest of your week. Love you all.